Okay, well, um, it is midnight uh, Eastern time. Uh, my carriage is being transformed in a pumpkin and I hope I'm not losing any shoes, but I guess in the meantime, we can do uh, <laughs> computing in the network. Uh, and so good morning to people or good night to others. This is again, computing in the network. Uh, the three chairs are here, Jeffrey He from the wonderful university, City University in Hong Kong, E mm -hmm. from Intel, and me currently in Montreal, Concordia University. Next slide. Uh, so you can connect to us in many uh, wonderful ways. Uh, obviously, we have all the meeting material on the data tracker, and you can get it from there. Uh, there's a netter pad. There's the Jabber, we still don't have anybody to take notes, but unless we have that in the next few seconds, in any way we can take notes from the recording because all sessions are being recorded. Uh, so please everybody, and I think everybody's doing it, video is off, keep yourself muted unless you're speaking. And uh, there is actually, um, the, there's a chat and there's the queue. And there's also there's a Slack channel that I created if anybody likes Slack, uh, which is also pretty much used. Uh, next slide. So this is the uh, usual uh, intellectual property. If anybody who is presenting something today, especially people from industry, uh, please make sure that you are uh, very much aware that you might, must disclose your IPR. And I think the big thing here is a timely matter uh, because in other research groups, we had problems with the timing. Next slide. This is also the privacy and the code of conduct. Uh, obviously everybody is expected to be respectful and um, not harass people or do anything that people could think could be harassment. So this is obviously being good citizen. And in that case, good net netizens. Uh, next. Uh, we have to remind a lot of people also that this is the IRTF. This is not a standards development organization. We have a mandate of conducting research, of fostering research. And I think uh, as the chair also of another research group and this one, we have to remember, remind, I think, uh, especially draft uh, writers that uh, when they write a draft, it is not about something that will become a standard, but something that should highlight what is the related research and why the research community should be aware of this work. Next slide. So coin, who are we? Uh, I, I think I will take just a few more seconds than I usually take on, on this slide uh, because of a previous meeting that happened uh, yesterday for some of you. And I think it's yesterday now for me and probably earlier today for others. Uh, our goal is to foster research in computing and the network. And what does it mean? That's what I think is, is getting to be interesting. Uh, our scope is pretty wide and we put architectures and protocols and obviously uh, real world use cases, application and work in progress. <clears throat> and again, this is research in architecture, research and protocol and research in use cases. Uh, for those of you who did not have a 20 hour day or had time to sleep in the middle, uh, there was this morning a, um, well, I guess it was yesterday by now, a meeting, uh, a side meeting on something that was called FIPE, which is Future Internet uh, Protocol Evolution. And it made me uh, understand, because we were a little bit, we were cited in that meeting, it made me understand that a lot of people did not really understand uh, what, what we were about. So let me take just a few seconds for that. Uh, we are about adding computation in network nodes. We're not doing P4. We had hackathons on P4 because P4 is one way to put computation in some network nodes, but P4 is not everything. We're not about switches. Uh, somebody this morning in um, 
in the chat, but well, these people are looking at programmable switches. Uh, yes and no. Uh, we're about research at, in the network, which is a distributed computer board. And this computer, distribu uh, computer board has computing units and storage units, and these units are connected by communication means. Uh, this also gives us an incredible amount of potential uses, and that's where the research becomes so interesting. Uh, those of you who were at, um, at SIGCOM and those of you who were at ICM, uh, could the, the conferences this year could see that there was an awful lot of research on this potential use uh, of this distributed computer board and routing, uh, which will be presented, Sharon is on now, is one of these applications. This is the in the network of the computing in the network. But there is also, uh, and I don't know if I don't know if Lars on, but Lars and, and Dave Oren have raised the issue that we could also be doing computing on the network. So once we're done filtering packets and routing them, we may be wanting to do more with them or to process them further for applications in IoT and AR, VR. So we're computing in the network layer and on the network layer. Uh, because we do that, it also means that we need addressing and we need discovery. And this is also application in some of the semantic routing that was uh, discussed in the previous meeting. Uh, and so it, it means all this discovery work that was going to be uh, presented and goes way beyond the original intent of, of some of the computing and network, which was basically for data centers. So it goes into also loads in, in machine learning and things like that. Uh, this morning when I was listening to the um, presentations, it made me even uh, think back in my old days when I was a, an architect in Teledesic, which was the internet in the sky. And for a long time, we had thought that, um, that it, Teledesic was the computing in the sky because we needed a lot of onboard processing to compute the routes and compute all the things that we needed there. So this was also computing in the network, but in that case, the network is really above our hair. So we welcome the research that is related to uh, some of the issues that were presented this morning uh, in our use cases, in our applications, in the work in progress. We welcome presentations and it made us think also after listening to this morning's presentation that today we have an awful, an awfully loaded uh, schedule with, with as uh, Jeffrey is going to present uh, nine uh, presentations, but that maybe uh, when we have our, our interim, sometimes in February, we could have a longer interim and actually really, really uh, focus on research presentation this time. And the people from FIPE, you're more than uh, welcome to present. So I think because of just I was said no, because of what I just said, I will probably take on to me to update. The, the, the description of the working group uh, on, on the data tracker to make sure that, you know, there's no um, assumptions about what we do that is something that we're not doing. So uh, this said, this was my, this was my spiel. Uh, and uh, I will let it to Jeffrey to introduce the agenda and our growing number of drafts. Okay. So we will, <clears throat> take a quick look at the current, job, current drafts and the milestones before the presentation. Then the presentation will start from a use case AI in, at the edge. Then Dirk will introduce their direction draft, which is, has been accepted as our working group, uh, research group document after the uh, last meeting. Then if we will introduce the data discovery and the discussion, this is the following the discussion in the last meeting as well, also in the mailing list. Then after that, so Ike or Dirk, Dirk Charlson will introduce, will introduce the, another uh, research group document, the use case. They have evolved from industrial use case to a more general. Then there's uh, some updates for the 
uh, oh, no. So the, the, there's another uh, presentation. So that's from adjust initially proposed to TSG working group, but they adjust when use cases. So explicitly mentioned in that draft that they're related to uh, coins use cases. So we uh, so they will introduce their this draft briefly. So in the part related to us. So then there were some updates for the transport document and uh, the application centric microservice and the security. And the finally, so Phil will introduce their new European uh, project, which is related to us as well. So after that, I hope we can have some time to discuss the future plans. Next, please. If, uh, yes, so this is a uh, current draft. So we have two uh, candidate research group documents. The, the use cases not not specific to industrial, not more general. And then the second is uh, the 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 cautious uh, direction. So we hope these two uh, research group document can uh, contain the insights or discussions in in our in this group. Then there are several uh, drafts will be present here today. And next time. Um, uh, yes, uh, before you go, Jeffrey, go before again. Uh, I think we had gone to the to the uh, list about those two uh, RG documents. And since we had no um, no comment about not accepting them, I think we can consider that they are accepted. So I guess yeah. we can move on to those two and then yes. look at the others. Yeah, okay. So these these are drafts not presented today, including some new uh drafts coming after last meeting from from the second one and the third one. Okay, maybe we'll adjust that later. Okay. Next. So, so this is milestones. So for the state of art and the challenges, maybe we we ha we have at least partially adjust in the direction and direction document and but we need uh, more contribution about the requirement and uh, the implication for the network elements and for the use cases we now have the use case uh, research group document and we can discuss further on that and uh, okay so as for the scope as we just say and others we have we have discussed this a little bit, right? We can continue this discussion about the scope of this research group. If you have any suggestions for the milestones, please let us know. And I think the intent okay. of the um, the February interim is really to focus not just on research but also on scope. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I think that's it. Uh, I guess I should stop sharing if I can. Um, and our first presenter is uh, Sharon, who will be speaking about the IETF LISP virtual routing for AI at the Edge presentation. Yes, hi, you. good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. That's good. Can you share my slides so I don't mess up your setup? Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, I guess I have to go back to the sharing. <laughs> okay. No. no worries. That was exactly why I queued things up. I'll share my entire screen. Here we go. Um, I think this is you. Yes? Yeah, yeah. And let me just put this into presentation mode. Okay. Okay. It was there. <laughs> Do you see it? Uh, you said you clicked on stop sharing. By uh, mistake. Oh, I, what I meant to do was to click on um, okay. to hide the screen sharing. Sorry. Let's quickly do that again. 
Okay. All right. Meanwhile, I'll just um, um, start talking, I guess. Um, I'm going to present um, the use of virtual routing to help uh, coin use cases, uh, specifically um, uh, Edge AI. So uh, this is mostly informational because it uh, shows how to use existing hard standards implemented already in software and hardware uh, in a certain way to help um, edge AI uh, use cases. Uh, I think it's been a very edgy ITF uh, all around. So there's a lot of interest, uh, hopefully. And maybe this can help. So basically, um, edge, uh, basically AI is uh, about taking uh, raw data and turning it into insights. Into insights. Um, there's a lot of compute involved, mostly uh, multiplying matrices and solving equations. Uh, and um, it requires a very high level of concurrency. Uh, today, mostly, we do that in the data center using uh, leveraging significantly the spine leaf architecture to scatter gather workloads uh, and uh, maximize concurrency this way. And uh, that is fine um, uh, using EMR, Databricks, Spark. Uh, and we should concentrate uh, when uh, we can, but then uh, we have to distribute when we have to. And uh, that's when we want to push edge uh, AI to the edge. This has mostly have to do with situations where the SLA is a sub-second. So if you think of the data center as the brain, you can think about things. Uh, the edge is more like the spine. You have to react immediately, but intelligently. Um, the load is of the raw data is too heavy uh, for me to bring in a timely matter to the data center. That's another uh, situation where I have to push AI to the edge. Or when there's a commercial or a regulatory uh, situation where I have to run in a carrier uh, in an edge premise or in a car OEM premise or in a municipal premise, or because uh, a, I want to pull a, a AI compute out of the appliances in the field uh, as much as I can for, for the same exact uh, approach, concentrate as much as I can. So I will pull as much AI as I can from cars because of updates, because of cost, because of idle time, uh, but I cannot push it all the way up to the cloud. All right, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, we wanna push things to edge, uh, AI to the edge, but we don't have the data center mechanisms that we that are, are, are available to us, and we need to find alternatives. And we're gonna examine these alternatives based on virtual routing uh, by two use cases on production networks uh, that fit um, in, um, both, uh, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Can somebody mute? Yeah, somebody is typing loudly and there's background noise. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna use two, um, two production networks that hit uh, all of these uh, checkpoints, uh, volume of raw data, response time, the cost of compute uh, and constraints that uh, must uh, and be pushed to the edge. So one of them is uh, uh, mobility networks and uh, car uh, auto big data, uh, uh, information gathered by cars as they drive by vision and sensory. And next slide, please. And the other example is cyber, where um, uh, switches, uh, terabit switches are sampled at gigabit rates and, uh, and generate alerts and visibility for uh, attacks uh, using AI. All right, 
So uh, next slide, please. I'm, I'm going to have uh, three slides on virtual routing. Uh, there's not enough time to deep dive into it. So if uh, any double clicking uh, can be done in the uh, offline or in the working group, which are relevant. So just uh, virtual routing 101. Everybody knows SD1, VXLAN. Uh, the ability to run a logical address space on top of the topological address space uh, is very useful for hosting enterprises on data centers, for uh, hybrid clouds, and so on. And the basic idea is if AAA is a logical address and it wants to talk to BBB, then that logically addressed packet is encapsulated inside the topologically addressed tunnel between 1.2 and 1.3, and that's, this is how traffic gets from AAA to BBB. So the basic uh, virtual routing standards tell us how to encapsulate. There's a few ways, but they don't tell us how does um, the router 1.2 know that BVB is behind 1.3. The reason they don't is uh, you could claim that an overlay network is just another network, and you could use any routing protocol of your choice, uh, if you like uh, vector path or link state or whatever. Uh, and next slide, please. Um, so Lisp takes an extra step beyond these basics. Uh, the claim here is that if I'm going to apply uh, a topological routing in the logical network, then I'm going to have topological constraints on my logical addresses. I'm going to have to have route peering, which is a constraint. I'm going to have to have subnetting, which is a topological constraint. And Lisp uh, notion here is that um, I can use an overlay uh, routing for the overlay and underlay routing for the underlay. And the overlay routing idea is quite simple, actually. If uh, there is an overlay, there must be an underlay. Therefore, I can scale a mapping system between logical address and topological location. Um, this is going to be key for AI Edge because we're going to use logical addresses as data indexes. We're going to address raw data uh, using logical addresses to these kill zones where the data is going to be reduced to insights uh, based on that sourced routing. So uh, a few list concepts here, like right, really quick. Uh, EAD is the logical address. RLOC is the topological address. XTR is an ingress egress tunnel router, and RTR is what we use here, which is a retunnel router, which is if AAA is on Verizon and BBB is on at and this will still work. Okay, next slide, please. And this is the last slide on virtual routing, and then jump to examples. Uh, if I have a mapping system, then I can define a multicast scheme, uh, which is different than what we know from PIM and MBONE, uh, which is more like TV kind of uh, uh, multicast, uh, where you have thousands of channels to millions of people. If I use a mapping system, then MLDs from AAA uh, subscribing to S, G source BBB theme XYZ, the MLD will stop at the, at the tunnel router, and he will register himself as subscribed to these feeds. So when BBB will send a packet to RTR uh, 1.3, it will look up, OK, which RTRs are subscribed on behalf of the peers behind them, will replicate to them, and these RTRs, in turn, will replicate to those uh, clients. So this is uh, very useful for what we're going to do with uh, edge reduction, because this allows us to have uh, millions of channels uh, for thousands of uh, endpoints. And this uh, will be a very effective uh, publish subscribe for um, uh, reductions. All right, so let's take a look at how this works. Uh, next slide, please. Here is example one. I have sampling of terabit switches uh, in 0.1%, meaning every second I'm going to scoop thousands out of millions of uh, tuples, and I'm going to steer them right at the source or close to the source to EIDs, which are five tuple masks. 
So if every, in every sampling cycles, in every switch, I'll, I'll pick up some tuples, then uh, I will still steer them to one location which keeps tracks of this five tuple uh, uh, mask or this uh, bunch of flows or one flow, depending on how I divide this thing. So that means I can calculate the distribution, the Bayesian distribution of the flow, and I can predict what it's going to be. I can create visibility to the entire traffic, even though I'm just sampling a fraction of the traffic and I'm tangent to the network and without any inline components. And when the flow surprises me, then I can raise the alerts. So this has been very effective uh, to put on top of existing situation or existing protections and uh, uh, this uh, mechanism, which is, uh, as I said, tangent, was able to detect DDoS like a minute before a firewall. Uh, and, um, Sharon, you're you're almost out of time. Can you uh, yeah. advance? So, yes. So I'll just skip. Uh, skip. Uh, this is shows you the reduction. This shows you the pattern. Uh, a raw data is sourced to uh, context and then reduced to feeds. And last slide. Um, next slide. Uh, next slide. <laughs> yeah. Next slide. Okay. <laughs> and this is the, the last slide. No, no, no. Uh, one more. Uh, no. Back. Back one. <laughs> yes. Okay. The second uh, production e example is when cars drive around. They steer images to uh, tiles of the earth, which have an IP address, an uh, EID. And that EID is calculating the state. It calculating changes in. Uh, it aggregates detections and uh, it creates a feed over for other cars of what's going on in this um, exact tile location. So the rest is, I think, self-explanatory of what kind of AI is done. How does it reduce the data? What is the data reduction? You can take a look at it yourself. And if there's any questions, I'll be happy to go offline. Or homography, DB scan, simplex thing. I think the important point here is that uh, this uh, method of achieving concurrency at the edge is based on existing standard, existing hardware that performs the load balancing, the security at wire speed. And it's very practical to leverage uh, going forward uh, in this direction. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, are there any questions? I don't see any hands. I don't see any chat. Uh, however, I will have a very quick question while the next people uh, line up their slides if they want to. Oh, uh, does somebody want your... me to display? Uh, the one to display uh, I don't know, Jorg and, and uh, Dirk, mm -hmm. uh, Dirk? Kushner, you're next. Uh, however, you. Sharon, okay. I do have a question. Uh, how do you see the future of this into coin? Uh, will you um, submit a new uh, a new draft? It's related a little bit to the draft that was started that was looking at uh, AI and uh, computing the network and AI. We can take the discussion to the list if you want, but it would be nice if you could, uh, you know, think about how you want this to uh, evolve in this group. Okay, the, uh, that's a great question. So, uh, the, the, throughout this, uh, when I first developed it for, for mobility, uh, the, 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 my goal was to invent as little as possible. So that's why I took the existing uh, overlay standards and specifically the existing LISP standard. So now, uh, what from what we observe after multiple production networks and use cases, is that what changes between uh, use cases is a uh, what is the addressable space, meaning giving a problem. How do you divide it naturally so that it's algorithmically can be source routed to uh, achieve distribution and parallel processing. And then uh, uh, what else changes, of course, is the reduction functions, which are domain specific and what else can we support. So the next step will be to, to generalize, but keep it informational. Uh, and uh, so it would allow you to, to take a, a family of uh, problems that can be naturally pre-partitioned uh, to an addressable space 
and that space uh, after reduction can be subscribed in scale by applications, databases, the next step of processing. Okay, uh, we can also have some of that discussion online. Thank you very much for your participation and uh, it was great to, to see, you know, a different uh, type of, uh, of computing in the network here. Uh, next presentation is Dirk. Dirk and York. And, and Do you guys want to present or shall I pre present? Oh, actually, it's already there. Here's Dirk okay. with, with video. Wow. Yeah, so I'm trying to think. Do, do you, you have to admit me that I can present, I think. Do we have to? Yes. Yes, but I think you have to request. If it doesn't work, video, I granted it. I granted it. Hopefully, it'll respond. We can see, are you seeing my screen still? Yeah, you are. I think so. Okay, uh, but I, oh, maybe what it is is that I have to stop um, sharing. I think that's what the issue is. I think that's what I heard. Okay, sorry to delay things here. And now you should be able to, yeah, that's what it is. So in the future, we have to undisplay and then others can be granted. How's that? Perfect. Looks good. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Or um, thanks for staying awake for so long. Um, okay. So this is an update um, on the uh, joint work um, with uh, Jörg and uh, Temu on uh, coin directions. Um, so the intention of this draft um, was to um, yeah, describe for the, for the group essentially um, or summarize basically um, our intentions. So what, why are we doing this? What do we mean by in or what, as uh, Marina say earlier mentioned uh, on network computing. Um, so kind of trying to um, characterize the same most um, significant um, yeah, ways of, of uh, conceiving this. Um, so presenting some some thoughts. So um, so at what um, say layers or say also levels uh, of complexity can you think about um, computing in that context? And um, also trying to um, yeah lay out the the research landscape. So what are actually interesting questions that um, we could look um, into in, in in Coin? And so the draft. Um, so far, it's um, say roughly structured like this. So we are um, introducing different types of network computing systems. We um, kind of collected um, some useful terms, um, trying to uh, differentiate ourselves um, and so characterize computing in the network versus packet processing network computing. So. Um, um, talk about a few uh, examples from maybe different points in in this overall um, landscapes, and then we um, have a list on so that's the growing uh, of research challenges. Um, quickly on the updates, um, yeah. So thanks for uh, adopting this um, uh, as a research group item. Um, thanks very much, um, Xavier, for um, the feedback uh, on the list. So. Um, we are currently working on this um, for the next revision. Um, in the meantime, we also had additional discussions with, uh, yeah, of course, within our um, uh, co-author community, but also with other collaborators in our research projects. Um, and so, so interestingly, we are currently working with applications de and developers that um, have some interesting use cases that are beyond um, the traditional data center and um, say, um, multi-access edge computing uh, scenarios. So we hope to also get some more in, yeah, kind of insights and uh, perhaps also feedback on that. Okay, maybe, um, so the, the feedback, um, if we were to summarize that, um, um, again, thanks very much, uh, Sergei, um, for, for providing that. Um, so we have a you know to do item list here. Um, there are some um, yeah of course editorial things to take care of. Um, it was an interesting 
point raised. Um, so, yeah, to what extent, um, yeah, should we consider, you know, packet processing as really a computing in the network um, thing? I mean, we have some work um, that we also talked about earlier uh, on the topic. Um, so, yeah, we yeah, are, could be, I mean, interesting to discuss. Um, so, how much we want to do on that in the future and not excluding it but um, so in general i mean um, the idea of adopting a a draft is of course also that um, the group uh, takes over um, the change control of, of, of the draft so uh, it's also now up to you to really check it more carefully and um, um, tell us um, what needs to be added um, so then there are questions of um, uh, discovery um, in the research challenges, so uh, whether that, that should be um, like a prominent uh, topic there. Um, we haven't made, made up our minds yet, um, but um, of course uh, it's, it's a good question. Um, Savi also raised an interesting question um, as to uh, who's actually um, the user in, in like coin scenarios. I mean, is it like the traditional maybe you know human mobile user or something um or is there also some so a, a different uh, notion so who is uh, in that sense um invoking a distributed computing for example um so there could be that they yeah the, the like user initiated foreground things uh, we could also have some um so kind of background um um, processing or something. So we actually, yeah, we are currently discussing with like telco operators, for example, whether there is a point in using like a coin approach to network management, for example, and that that could maybe a bit go in, the, in, the, in this direction. Um, also related to the lifetime of and life cycle of um, in network compute functions. So is that something like more like a service um, or something like a one shot um, status invocation. Of course, there is probably both, um, but um, so maybe better describe these uh, different um, um, types of, of uh, computing, perhaps. Um, other things that we came up with um, result provenance. Um, so there are these um, use cases where, um, you know, computing is about data processing, and uh, so that's. Um, interesting and is, is a yeah important question um so how can you trust the data and how can you trust the computation steps uh, on the data or, or can you say anything about that um a bit related perhaps to the previous presentation um, um impact of mobility so sometimes you want to you know maintain a set of um, distributed computing nodes for example um, how is that? Um, yeah, possible, or what are the challenges when things are more dynamic? Um, so, in general, this is a bit um, so. Yeah, additional thoughts we we put up together. Um, so we have we we had this discussion about um, computing in the network, whether it's in network computing or on network computing. Um, so I think uh, what we probably don't want to do is, um, you know, integrating computing in the, say, a big, in, big internet, capital internet, in a sense that, um, well, we are changing the internet architecture or something that uh, you know, every router has, has to be programmable or has to support computing. Um, and also, I don't think it's, you know, leading to anywhere when we were to like uh, you know develop alternative cloud architectures or these kind of things but we think what's interesting here is um you know also um maybe approaching this from from two perspectives so applying internet principles uh, to uh, distributed computing um for example thinking about um you know the function or work split between things like um yeah routing forwarding intelligence um mapping systems like the, the ones we heard about before um but then also uh, in the other direction um learning um from how distributed computing systems work today and uh, maybe how this could be on the one hand um supported better 
by um, say maybe say a network approach, but also what can we learn in terms of um, yeah you know, mechanisms, consensus mechanisms, these kind of things um, for for building systems. And um, so while we're not kind of probably changing the whole internet, we may end up with a set of technologies in the end that help us to do um, distributed computing better uh, for specific environments. And um, yeah, I mean, they, they could then leverage yeah, coin derived principles, perhaps. Um, we don't think that this, this should be necessarily constrained by you know our understanding of how you know communication TCP/IP based communication works today, but um, of course there's also um, yeah or, um, probably one end of the spectrum. And um, yeah, we have seen that there are many domain specific solutions, um, industrial IoT use cases, um, and so on. Um, on the one side, it would be good if they are not only, you know, sp you know, point solutions. Um, on the other hand, of course, there is also good reason to, um, you know, have maybe kind of specialized, um, um, yeah, implementations of of, uh, of a coin system in in these environments. So we haven't really put this into the draft yet, but. Um, so we think that computing in the network is a bit more than just forwarding packets to nodes that happen to host, um, you know, services uh, on on VMs or, uh, or represented as processes. This because this can be done um, already with, with various tools. So I think there's potential to yeah go a bit beyond that um, and so um, yeah we embrace the idea of supporting distributed computing better as we as we discussed before. So not just building pipes between processes. And um, yeah, and so, so I think we mentioned that last time. Um, so um, it's probably not, a, not, so we don't see much research potential in, you know, um, you know enhancing TCP, adding new headers or something um, to support in-network computing um, in, in that direction. So because first of all, probably doesn't really, um, fit so well to the end-to-end -end, um, stream model when you um, have to uh, yeah implement hop by hop um, processing or, or you know data um, manipulation so if i think if we run into this problem we probably should rethink our requirements fundamentally and um, so i think it's really important also to keep the security model in mind so of course we can you know manage to steer packets to any point in the network uh, where some compute happens, but uh, we don't think that's uh, necessarily um, helping so much. So uh, it's also really important to have a, a good security um, story. Um, so as we mentioned before, um, can you trust the nodes? Can you trust the computation, the results, and so on? Um, so that's a bit of, I mean, it's not only in, like to just pick this, this TCP example as, as um, say one way to, to illustrate uh, what's probably not so not so um, interesting to us at least in our view so far okay so here's the plan so we will um, yeah resubmit um, the draft now with the new name um, um, currently trying to think about um, say yeah more representative use cases so I mean we don't want to you know just fill pages with describing all kinds of possible use cases but should be you know, it should bring some some merit and uh, interesting aspects. Um, yeah, try to to include more um, yeah different technology variants. Um, we yeah started some discussion or work on on on, on say taxonomy type of of, of text. Um, and um, I think we could also now update the draft a little bit with um, you know capturing so like recent um activities in 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 coin and um so that's also on the list um so but the overall goal goal remains so we, i mean this is not about um yeah laying out a coin architecture or something or are we, um not, of course uh, also not a, any kind of solution but really more um as a document that helps us to understand the problem um and so hopefully it's going to be useful for that um so yeah then of course it may not co cover all the all the um possible variants of a network computing but um so let's let's find a like a 80 percent um uh, coverage here 
Okay, that's that's it for for this time. So I'm done. Thank you. Um, I don't see anybody in the. Uh, uh, there's a lot of chat, but okay. What question was your reference to the use cases draft? Um, I yeah. kind of like the idea, actually, of using that as a holding place for use cases that are interesting, um, because then every draft, every other draft, doesn't have to re-enumerate all the use cases. Was that what you were saying, sir? Or were you saying you were on to align with it? Can you clarify? Yeah, I mean, use cases, um in terms of you know cl yeah classes of use cases so uh, representative use cases that um, um, yeah reflect some different categories of of um, yeah coin concepts or uh, realizing coin concepts um, of course I don't think we should you know we should use an internet draft to collect all kinds of possible use cases I mean that could also be done on a wiki page or, or something. But um, yeah, some 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 level of, of abstraction would be good, I think. Um, any other question? If not, thank you very much, and thank we you. will uh, okay, go to the next presentation. Hang on, Hang on. Oh. it looks like uh, Ike and Phil both have questions. Yeah, hi, here's Ike. So uh, one of the authors of the Ike. use cases draft. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to chime in here. Um, so our idea was actually just, uh, as Eve said, to have a like collection of the drafts uh, of the different uh, available use cases that we have, and then similar to what uh, Lurk said, we then want to yeah create also some form of taxonomy out of that, so that we just don't only have that collection of of use cases, but also some um, yeah further good coming from the draft. Um, yeah, because just as Dirk said, um, we could also collect use cases somewhere else, but we also want to provide them uh, some form of uh, taxonomy from that. But I will talk about that later as well. Okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, we, we're happy to, um, you know, find a useful um, split between, you know, topics, use cases for um, with the other draft. Um, so yeah, yeah. Like, I think that that's just discuss this offline. What what is a, a good way to to, speak, to um, organize this? I think what will be quite Phil, Phil here. I think what would be nice, um, not just to make a taxonomy of them, but to try and draw out the kind of key requirements for coin. So you know, collect them together in a way that it's the requirements that come out rather than just a taxonomy of these cases. Yeah, so um, I think we are a bit reluctant on really calling this requirements because I mean this is research. Um, yeah. I yeah. mean we, so it's a bit more collecting ideas and um, yeah, you know, putting them together in an understandable way. We can't really uh, mandate so so many things here. Mm. Uh, yeah, perhaps it's the wrong way of putting it. But what are the sort of weird or surprising things that come out of these use cases that mean that you or need the common the common elements maybe mm. yeah yeah okay good yeah. i don't know okay Not so sure. we're, yeah. we're out of time right now uh okay so i think um uh, eve you're the one who's going to present the next one right i am okay there you go okay so i think Dirk. okay let's see go back to this um uh, we're running uh, a bit behind, so... Um, Why don't I make it really quick? Let me just make well, note of my time. Okay. What did you want to say, Marie Jose? Nothing. It's fine. Okay. Let me put this in full screen mode. Okay. Um, one change that happened was that Xavier joined the, the, the drafts. Um, we had kind of two phenomena happen. We started out life um, as having a draft that was specifically around data discovery for EDGE um, based on some use cases that in fact we presented pretty early on in the um, beginning of the COIN uh, endeavor in, at the BOF. And um, it 
ended up that we there were quite a few other discovery drafts um, that it generated, um, kind of an overarching discovery problem statement, and also then a mobility discovery. Uh, if uh, we don't see your, your your screen at all. Oh. Okay. Uh. Start again. Okay. Can yeah, you there see we are. it now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so the point was that we kind of expanded into three drafts around discovery, and now we are beginning to kind of recoalesce. And in this latest iteration, uh, Xavier's draft on mobility, uh, the, the language was included, um, some of the language was included in the edge data discovery draft. And it is our intention to revisit whether we need, um, you know, multiple drafts on discovery or just one. But I wanted those of you who hadn't been following to understand at least the lineage. Let's see if I can get this to move uh, for some reason. I'm not getting controls. Are you seeing anything? I'm not, it seems like my computer it doesn't is, move, no. It's not moving. Okay. Let's just do it this way then. Okay. Um, so what is the problem here? Uh, the problem, as alluded to by all of the talks today, is that increasingly the compute um, capabilities are really scattered around the network everywhere. Um, and that really has blurred the line between what's the network and what's compute and what's storage. And just as the compute is getting scattered, increasingly um, a consequence of that is that the data is getting created everywhere. It's getting cached and copied everywhere. And each time it's computed across, it's transformed and becomes yet new data. So data begets new data. Um, and so we have this problem that data is scattered. And um, especially, um, you know, again, this the problem sort of originated uh, with with these sort of edge use cases that we were examining. Um, but what it leaves us with the predicament is that we really would like to understand then how do we find this data or pockets of data, data lakes or databases, and within those pockets of data, specific data objects, where are they located? And we'd like to do that um, to locate this distributed data in some kind of open and standardized way instead of in sort of proprietary silo fashion because there, there are many solutions to this but you know how do we kind of liberate the data from all of these disparate places and um, when we say data we mean data that's measurement data that's sort of the typical iot definition of data but also um, when we talk in terms of you know what it is that we're sending across the network really the network is agnostic and protocols would be agnostic to what it is they're sending. It's really just a bag of bits. And in fact, um, sometimes we're sending around the compute itself, programs and services that are the executables or functions or algorithms um, because we need to move them around because in fact, the data measurements, they're so enormous if it's video or something else. Um, uh, sometimes we can't move the, the measurement data or the monitoring data, we have to move the compute to it. So in that case, it's the bag of bits. And then of course, there's all the metadata that describes either the data or the, or the applications and, and other things. And those might describe, for example, resources. Um, um, uh, Eve, can you make the font slightly bigger? How's that? Yes, it's better. Thank okay. You. Um, and so uh, last time there was quite a bit of discussion about um, it, we were kind of on the brink of asking the, the group whether or not the edge data discovery draft was ready to be adopted um, as a draft to and in fact drill down as uh, Dirk alluded to this issue about discovery to what extent is that an, an attendant problem around coin um, but we were really challenged in the debate uh, a question and answer at the last IETF. And so we thought we'd take a moment to say, you know, why do we think that discovery, particularly around data, is fundamental to COIN? 
And it's because, at least my mental model of what coin is or what computation is, is that it's a function. It gets performed on data and it typically generates data. And so all three of those aspects, each like the, the input data, we need to marshal it from somewhere. We may not be, you know, things are not always tidy, containerized workloads. We may need to marshal the data from somewhere um, on the fly, it, particularly in autonomous kinds of situations. Furthermore, it's not just the data we may be marshaling, but we may be needing to marshal the function itself, the compute, the algorithm and so forth, because again, sometimes it's contextual what it is that we want the function to be. Um, and then uh, sort of in this last stage, uh, of course, there's output from the computation and we need enough context and metadata about um, our place in the universe, <laughs> whether we're mobile or, you know, changing dynamic network um, situations to understand where do we place that data for potential reuse, whether it's cached or replicated um, uh, or archived for that matter. And so that's really, um, you know, the, the crux for why we, we think data discovery is fundamental. So we we outlined why do we think that COIN might be the, the right place for this kind of discussion. Well, um, research groups are good staging grounds for, um, uh, it says mature ideas, but it says, I wanted to say mature ideas that are not mature. <laughs> Um, and, and so, in fact, data discovery is an early stage idea, and as such, it has no specific protocols or architectures that we're recommending at this point. Um, but as I stated, data discovery is motivated by compute, but it's also motivated by mobility and network dynamics, uh, linking back to the previous talks. And then, you know, why wouldn't we put it in COIN? Well, it seems a bit off topic based on our original group charter. It would seem less off topic uh, in terms of the, if, you know, if you were following the progress of these discussions uh, since the beginning of COIN. Um, and, you know, we did have this problem that the documents have, we've had multiple documents that seem to have sort of blurred uh, the relevance or, you know, grown the scope and that maybe one of the outcomes of these debates is that uh, maybe we need to better characterize what needs discovery in COIN um, and really focus in on that. So that was really um, the recap. And uh, so really the question to the group is, uh, do people think that it is relevant? And if so, uh, is the document at least mature enough, uh, having been now through about five iterations, um, to uh, request adoption? So I guess you mean the first one, right? Because there's three of those. Oh, no. Uh, the one that's the most mature is the edge data discovery. OK, so the first one uh, and, and for for the sake of time, I, I think we could put that question to the group. Uh, I think you were right in uh, saying yet yeah, people were thinking it was a bit off topic. But again, uh, when I started listening to, like I said, other meetings and when I started thinking about it and I did meet with Xavier here in Montreal, I think we had a good discussion about what it could mean. So we could push that to the list. Uh, but I would ask you the question you always ask of everybody who presents into this group, Eve. Uh, is it only you guys or there's actually other research on that? Well, I don't know. I mean, like I could bounce this question back to Dirk. I mean, it was on his list and we did not coordinate. Um, you know, I, we, I didn't prime him to say that he thinks that, you know, discovery is a, is a research topic um, or a research direction for a coin. So, um, Perhaps, you know, hearing from people from these other quarters would be a helpful, different perspective. I mean, my, my position is like, you can't do compute without data and well, you I, need to find it. And whether we, we think that these different flavors of computation that we refer to in, in the title coin um, represent the kinds of computations that uh, are less, tidy than containerized <laughs> workloads, which was, I think, what the debate about was about last time, and that they're going to be these more autonomous situations um, with more dynamic uh, contexts like mobility um, and, and network uh, changes and programmable networks, uh, where we're going to need to find the data uh, more on the fly and will need to be assisted through discovery. Malicia, we have last in the queue, maybe 
Oh, yes. Lars, wonderful. Come, debate with us. Hey guys. Yeah, so this is actually a more general point, not so much related to this particular uh, document, although I, we can have a discussion here too. So I want to say that I'm, I think actually we're wasting a lot of time discussing whether something should be adopted by a working group. Um, and it's actually not a working group, it's a research group, right? Or not. Oh. I think that is that is just a waste of time, right? I don't really care whether something is a research group document or not, it doesn't matter. But I think a much more worthwhile question is to ask is, would this group want to discuss more of this in the future? Like this yeah, particular okay. research or not, right? And then whether something is a research group document or not, who actually cares, right? It doesn't matter. The, the point right. is that you want to have a discussion on, on something and um, therefore, also, I wouldn't be so limited to the charter, right? Whether, you know, if people, if there's no community yes. here to discuss this further, um, it doesn't matter even if it was in the charter, right? And, and on the flip side, if it's not directly in the charter, but people want to discuss it, what's the harm in it to do that yeah. for a while? Right? So I, yes. I would um, not act so much as a working group, you guys. I think it's it's actually harmful what, to what you're trying to do. Thanks. Okay, thank you for that advice. So I would say we've we had can... comments on the opposite too. So I think we're going to uh, bring that in the middle or they could take, but I agree, uh, Lars, that, uh, and, and this is actually something that we discussed about this meeting that we were completely dominated by drafts. But, um, and I see Mike saying, is it harmful to ask for a job option? No, but yeah, maybe, Maybe it's not that necessary, but I would say that we were, we were Lars, we were very much discussing the fact that we were dominated by drafts and that we wanted to have more time for uh, um, like more research presentations. And this is what we want to do for, for the, the interim, because again, this, but that, that's, that's the way it, it, it happened. Yeah, and also I think you want to have much more Q&A than, than, than you're having, which, which is not a whole lot. And, and Mike, it's not harmful to ask for research group adoption, but I think it just wastes time and it doesn't matter. What's the, why does it matter whether this is a research group document or not? It, you know, I, I really, at, at this point at least, I don't, I don't really see the, the value in debating this in the meeting where we could actually talk about the technical content rather than whether we're handling it this way or the other way. Point taken. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Dirk, did you uh, have a comment? Dirk yes. Um, good morning. Um, I mean, I haven't had a, an awful lot of um, time to look at the drafts yet, but I do think the topic is extremely important. But I wonder in terms of um, RG relevance, it's not about RG adoption, it's about RG relevance to try to ask the question on data discovery more, I mean, COIN has two aspects in the title, one is computation, and data discovery is computation, I totally agree. But um, I think what would be interesting to ask questions is, to what extent is it an in-networking uh, question or relevance? Mm -hmm. What is it the network really can do to aid the problem? The problem of distributed data is a huge problem, and it's, it's, it's extremely relevant um, in, some of the discussions I had recently, for instance, with you know transportation automotive, where the trend stays at data centralization and compute centralization purely because you know OEMs and car manufacturers are very concerned about data floating about and not being under their control. So it's a huge problem. It's very relevant. But I think the question for Coin would be to not forget the in-networking part. How is it that in-network capability can aid the problem and not discuss problem about data discovery in general? Because you know, that's a computational uh, uh, issue, which hugely interesting, but I'm not entirely sure how much coin can shed light on because there's a huge community out there. So it would be good to hone into the in, the, the, in, the in networking part quite a bit. And I can half raise my hand on that because I have a little bit of interest in that. I have to see how my time allows to more specifically contribute to the draft, but uh, uh, at least I have an interest in it. So see it as a half hand. Or okay. Well, but you're next, Dirk. So, um, or well, you and Ike. So, that's yeah. I'll do the presentation. It's you guys. Yeah. Uh, so, grant, can you grant me the uh, presentation, right? Yes. Here you go. 
see. All right. So um, now that we've had a discussion already on the use cases, uh, like <laughs> before here, uh, let's get it going again. Um, so as uh, Jeffrey has already said in the beginning, um, we're now moving away from the yeah, only sole focus on industrial use case, but we're now also at other use cases. Um, and um, yeah, in this quick presentation, I wanted to yeah give you our intentions, um, what we want to achieve with this draft, and um, yeah, as you all as you have also heard now, um, Dirk has joined us um, in the group of authors. So yeah, um, the premise of the draft um, was or previously was um, that we wanted to um, highlight the importance for uh, of coin for industrial use cases. Um, so we collected quite a bunch of them in that draft, um, but then Dirk suggested that it might be a good idea to have a draft that is uh, rather open to other use cases as well, because then we can actually cover a larger spectrum of requirements as well. Um, and this is why we have now opened up our draft, um, so that we now want to really, um, yeah, also take a look at other uh, use cases. Um, this also reflects in um, the the new. Uh, structure that we have in the draft. So as you can see, we have um, moved down the uh, industrial use cases part from um, the from the title down into a section level. Um, uh, as you can see on the on the bottom, we have uh, quite a bunch of uh, other use cases that we are planning to uh, insert into the draft. Uh, currently, they are only placeholders. Um, so um, we didn't really find the time to uh, insert them um, already, so that's uh, one of our next steps that we want to do. Um, we then want to have a similar structure for all of those use cases. Um, so as you can see up there in uh, 3.21 and 3.22, for example, um, there's also some part of that in what, what Phil uh, suggested a couple of minutes ago. And then finally, we want to yeah, work on those um, findings that we have there and then create some kind of taxonomy, find common building blocks, and so on. Um, and yeah, in the following, I want to go a little bit into more detail uh, on the different aspects that I've shown here on the slide. So first up, the new use cases that we have already. Um, so as you can see, um, most of them will be com coming over from the App Center's draft of Dirk. Um, so we, we um, Similar to what I uh, said uh, in the presentation of the other Dirk a couple of minutes ago, um, we think that it might be a good idea if we have like this, uh, this use cases um, collected in a, in a central position where we can then um, really point to from other other drafts then, um, so that the other drafts are, can then really focus on on um, the context uh, on, on on their real content um, and like. Then everyone else, um, yeah, does only have to know the central use cases draft or the use cases that are in there, and then understanding other use cases or uh, the, the the other drafts is then uh, perhaps a bit easier. Um, but then, as you can see here, the in the five dot two are also thinking about some form of uh, edge AR and VR. Um, so Dirk has a use case on, uh, or or some ideas on that. Um, we also thought that it might be a good idea to uh, potentially move some of the content of the uh, now expired draft of Marie Jose over to this draft here. Um, and there are also a couple of other sources that we could think of at this point. Um, so to fill this initial set of new use cases. Um, but in general, we are, uh, we are also open for, for, other, um, for other use cases. Um, and what we are generally intend to have as a structure here is like some form of threefold approach. Uh, we first want to have a short motivation that generally describes um, the setting that we uh, that we're looking at. Um, so, using the example here of this network control, we just described here that uh, cyber physical systems are increasingly complex, and that local control in that scenario is not often uh, or often not really sufficient anymore. And that a central control um, might help in, that, in those cases. So just setting the the, the, major, the general stage uh, for for the um, for the use case. Then um, after that, we then plan on having characterization and requirements. So uh, Phil mentioned that we also should collect requirements, and that is actually what we want to um, 
yeah, at least enable with our approach here. Um, and um, using the example of the in-network control uh, again, um, we could um, yeah, characterize it that as a simple control loop that is running. And this control loop might be influenced by various factors. And um, it generally requires uh, low and stable latencies. Um, so just um, to have that as an example here. Um, and then finally, we also want to include um, a, a section on yeah, potential approaches where we think that um, it might be a good idea to, to highlight how stuff is currently implemented maybe or how uh, we would envision it to be implemented using COIN. Um, and then also um, perhaps formulate some kind of research questions so to, to actually um, state what is really the, the, the central idea of, of this use case. Uh, and what is the, the real value for, for this use case. Um, and in the, in the case of the e-network control, um, we would here, or we've put here that um, we want to have an approximated imprecise control um, in the network for a faster response and then all having uh, slower responses coming from afar, so from a central uh, position maybe. And um, one of the re biggest questions here, or all of the research questions mainly, uh, revolve around the question how the different approximations that we might use here um, can actually be uh, derived. Um, yeah, then um, our main goal, um, as I said, is not only to collect the different use cases, but then also make something out of them. Um, and uh, here I al already said that we want to create some form of taxonomy. Um, and for that, we want to then actually use these, the structure that we have for the different use cases. So the, the common uh, setting with the requirements, um, perhaps also analyze algorithmic properties of solutions that could be applied there, and then try to yeah, find common requirements, common combinations of requirements, uh, common building blocks, um, and then really try to yeah, define different classes of use cases that we have. So I think. Dirk Kutcher also said something similar to that uh, in his presentation. Um, so this is really what we intend this draft to be. Um, so a collection of uh, classes of use cases with certain requirements, a list of requirements maybe, um, so that then um, yeah, work can really be derived from those use cases and then um, yeah, really um, focus on certain aspects of the use cases or solve problems in, in them. And uh, the big thing at this point here is that we need more use cases for that. Uh, so currently, as I said, we only really have the industrial use cases in there. Uh, the other uh, use cases from, from the App Center's draft will move over eventually. But um, even then, we only would have like three large groups of uh, use cases. Uh, and so it would be really um, great if other uh, people here would also have uh, the interest of uh, con contributing use cases. So uh, the um, in the first presentation we had like this AI, uh, AI to uh, AI to the edge uh, use cases with the uh, auto and the, the cyber cases. So that sounded uh, really interesting, and um, yeah, that's really open and looking for co uh, collab collaborators at this point, um, so that we can then um, yeah, increase the uh, yeah, diversity of the use cases and then really find interesting requirements and then, um, yeah, hopefully get a good basis for future work at this point. Um, yeah, so this is then now the last slide. Um, yeah, we were not really sure about our status as a research group draft, um, but in the beginning we solved that, so let's skip over it so that last is happy also. Um, yeah, what do we need for our draft now? Um, we really need input on our approach on how we want to describe and include use cases. So if this separation and characterization and requirements and approaches make sense, uh, if you guys have um, better ideas for that, please tell them um, so that we can then really uh, improve the approach here and perhaps maybe um, make it more easy for other people to contribute as well. Um, yeah, we also need new contributors with new new, new use cases. Um, so we'll add the draft, uh, the draft sources to the uh, research group um, GitHub soon. So then um, yeah, text contributions should be really easy. Um, 
And yeah, then the plans for the immediate future are that we will uh, first move the use cases over from the app centers draft, um, and then um, yeah, and, and and follow our um, own um, the guidelines regarding the descriptions of the use cases there. And then as soon as we have enough use cases to to uh, we will also want to um, start with a rough analysis of of the use cases so that we can then. Um, yeah, start uh, in the right in the direction of a taxonomy. And yeah, with that, I would already be at the end. Uh, and hopefully, now a lot of people show up in the queue saying that they want to contribute to uh, the draft. So thanks. Ah, oh, thank you. Um... So am I see. I, am Dirk I, I know I'm, I'm in the queue, but who else is there? I see Dirk in the queue. Dirk, trust. Yes, um, thanks. Thanks, Ike. Um, just to continue on, 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 on what Ike has presented, but also connecting to what um, Dirk had said before, uh, the taxonomy part is going to be a really important one. I would really like to invite also contributors specifically to that as well. It's not only just a new use case, but also taxonomy. Because I think one of the critical pieces in the use cases, first we get a place where they are where they are, are gathered. That was the first idea of merging things, and uh, I will say that later in our own draft, but we're going to, to do that. So just to move them out of individual drafts, that's a good thing. But it also allows us to essentially look at the use case and make sense out of them. I think Dirk's comment about um, there's a lot of edge and cloud here is a very important one. It also ties back what I mentioned before in the data discovery. I think key to the use cases will be to a little bit sort them out or at least find a taxonomy that kind of allows us to point out what are the coin specific one and coin again not just computation which sometimes leads us to edge use cases but the in-network part and that's kind of like what i'm looking for in the taxonomy to find out what are aspects that we can use in the taxonomy to look at those use cases from that perspective to really sort out the ones that are still interesting and cool. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the use cases, but the ones that are more relevant to the networking part um, and, and are not just in the air quotes, just edge cases or cloud cases, um, which, which might have an interest of their own, but maybe doesn't add much to the networking part. So that's the taxonomy bit that's, I think, really, really important. And, and I'd really like to see anybody's good ideas to that uh, um, as well. Another thing, I just looked through the participant list because I wasn't entirely sure if he would join given the early time. Um, but I will connect that to Ike directly. I had spoken to a potential uh, a contributor from UCL on use cases. So probably given that I can't see him at the moment in the uh, participant list, um, I probably will just make the connection. So we may have already a contributor there. Just wanted to uh, make people aware of that. Uh, and who, who is that? Um, David Griffin and Miguel, I'm not sure if Miguel is here, but didn't scroll, scroll that far down. No, he's not okay. right. Miguel Rio from um, UCL. Um, we've been talking to them about use cases uh, uh, related to uh, um, arts and theatre uh, and how um, some of them being extremely demanding um, uh, on the network and how the network might help. But again, the question there would be how can in networking functionality really help, or is it all down to? intelligent maybe edge software um, which is still an interesting use case but maybe not that relevant for this group thanks um i was the other person in the queue and it was just to tell you guys that if you need my help to move the material from my expired draft into yours i'd be more than happy uh, i was supposed to get help from other people to uh, update it but if it's just like update you know making it was a use case anyway so i'd be more than happy to use it as a use case in yours sounds great thanks so i don't see any other people in the queue uh, no. so thanks again thank you very much uh we, the next one is a new contributor uh from from Japan, so I will uh, let uh, Itoshi Hiroshika, sorry, uh, start his presentation. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you very well. Okay, thank you. Uh, but I don't see your slide. Uh, can you display your slide? Uh, the slide I sent you. 
Oh, uh, Eve, you're the one who does the, the slide thing. I'm getting sleepy and now I'm forgetting how to do this. No, I'm, I'll figure it out. Hold on. Come on, you're three hours behind me. Don't start. I know, I know. Uh, this one was... Um, transport. Is it the transport? Yeah, transport. Okay. And let's do this. Okay. Oops, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No problem. There you go. Yes, that. Yeah, thank you. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Rich Kasai. I'm from uh, Preferred Networks and the White Project. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to talk about separation of data paths and data flows uh, sub layers in the transport layer. This draft is uh, proposed for transport layer I and mean, TSB uh, working group, but uh, uh, some uh, of the topics are related to the in network computing and coin RT, so I want to talk, talk about that here. So thank you for uh, taking your time. And uh, um, uh, yeah, we start thinking about the layering architecture for the new distributed computing paradigms, including the mo uh, mobile or multi-access edge computing and in-network computing. I personally think the requirement for the transport layer protocol is different by computation models, such as the data center networking or, or uh, geographically distributed environment. So I'd like to um, begin with a uh, uh, more general layering architecture rather than the specific protocols to extract the common functionality for the future protocol development. And uh, yeah, as you know, the internet has been uh, based on the end-to-end -end principle. So the, uh, the complicated or the complex functionality is implemented at the end host and the network, uh, intermediate network is uh, done. So, uh, according to the end to end principle. But uh, recently, uh, the network becomes more smarter. So QoS is introduced, middle boxes are everywhere, and uh, recently, uh, new distributed computing paradigms, such as the uh, edge computing, in network computing, are introduced. So, non -trans uh, so middle boxes uh, introduce a non-transparent functionality that may be added by uh, that, that requires to load packets to middle boxes or uh, packet-based uh, you know, policy-based routing or software-defined networking technologies. Distributed computing paradigms uh, requires to um, make the network smart and uh, these often use over networks to uh, route the packets to the, uh, the target computing resources. Next, please. Yeah, thank you. So I started uh, thinking about the transport layer functionality to separate the functionality into the multiple layer for the future protocol development. So in this draft, I separate, I divide the transport layer into two sub layers. One is the data pass layer, and the, the other is the data flow layer. Data pass layer is related to the data pass, as it's a name, and the data flow manages the data flow or more, more complicated uh, protocol handling for the data flow. So data pass uh, layer, uh, the, the, the functionality for the data pass layer uh, is the following. For example, the trajectory or waypoint handling to uh, designate the waypoint for the uh, some kind of flows and the bidirectional connection and resource management for the networking, such as condition control and the data flow multiplication over the one path. And the packet, uh, packet duplication may be implemented for packet loss recovery for lossy network or links like FEC. And over the data path, uh, data flow layer uh, adds some functionality about the retransmission, flow control, flow prioritization, end-to-end -end security, or um, multi-path protocol functionality. So data flow protocol requires uh, more um, memory to handle the retransmission or buffer, uh, receive buffer management. So I want to show some use. Uh, in this draft, I write, I wrote some use cases of this uh, draft. But uh, in this presentation, I'm going to uh, dig into the in-network computing. So in network computing, I don't. I think I don't need to uh, say something about that because everyone are specialists. Uh, but uh, in network computing has been uh, um, researched uh, maybe more than thirty years. Um, the active network is uh, one of the uh, the beginning 
uh, research, early research of the in network computing. And then the recent read is the substructure training has been discussed in the IETF. And uh, in the data center networking, uh, data aggregation redistributions uh, used for is used for uh, all reduced procedure for the distributed deep learning. So in network computing has been focused recently again. Oh, sorry. Uh, next, please. Uh, next, please. I, I have talked about uh, this slide. Yeah, sorry. Uh, and next, please. So, but the uh, computation model for the in, in network computing varies by the um, the applications. So this is the simplest um, in network computing model. So nothing in, in uh, no intermediate layers stores any state of the computation and the data passing information. So programs are installed, deployed in uh, some in-network computing components uh, or in-network computing router uh, like this. And the packet going through the uh, router is processed according to the program. But uh, these routers don't store any state of the packet or data pass. So in that, in such case, we can leverage ECMP equal customer pass because the uh, the data pass is not uh, is not required to be uh, cared for the uh, network computing. So the, this is the simplest uh, computing model for the network computing. But uh, usually uh, this isn't uh, yeah the more complex the, uh, the computation model is used. So next, please. So usually, uh, the path is, uh, the data path is more important for the in-network computing because the different programs may be deployed at the uh, routers. So the for each flow, and each flow needs to care, needs to be aware of the data path and the waypoints to apply the program to the packet. So in such cases, for, such, uh, for example, the function uh, service function chaining uh, uses the policy-based routing or uh, segment routing or SFC protocols to classify the packet which uh, were to be routed. So in this model, a waypoint must be designated and controlled so routers request to manage the state for the data pass. But uh, each router, I mean, the, each in-network in computing router do not store any um, state of the packet. So it just applies a program to, the, to each packet without any state. Next, please. So um, this is the uh, the uh, the bureau, uh, figure below is the um, the example of the uh, layering for this uh, computation model. So the uh, data pass needs to be aware in this computation model, but the data flow, uh, I mean that uh, the in-network computing routers need do, do not store any state, so that they don't require any um, flow control or um, the transmission between the uh, routers at the end, end, end host. Next, please. But uh, usually, uh, the initial computing is more complex. So they require uh, to aggregate the data part of multiple packets or uh, compute uh, using a multiple packet in the flow. So they, the initial computing routers or node requires to terminate multiple flows to perform data aggregation processing. So in uh, next please. So in this model, the <coughs> in-network computing routers need to terminate the data flow. So they in, uh, introduce the data flow layer. They need to implement the data flow layer protocol at the in-network com uh, computing node. Next, please. So I will have uh, one minute. So, so this is a summary. So I propose a separation of data pass and data flow layers. So data pass uh, is to be aware of network resources and the trajectory or waypoints. 
The data flow layer is to be aware of competing risks and the flow level integrity. So next step is to improve the ID uh, by adding analysis of existing protocols and uh, uh, adding more use cases and example. And uh, I think we need to uh, propose some protocols for data path layer and the data flow layers. So thank you for listening, that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, is there anybody in the... Yes, there's two people in the queue. Uh, Kiriti. And the well, first, Dirk. Sure, I go. Uh, and then me? Kiriti. And then okay. Yord. Okay. Um, um, uh, I don't know who's going first. Go ahead, Yord. Okay. Um, thanks. Um, yeah, thanks. That's actually um, interesting. So, um, I mean, most often um, compute functions, you know, want to do something on the payload, so the application data. Um, so, what security model should we apply for, um, you know, your your data flow layers? I mean, would you terminate a security context in the network, or um, how would that look like? So I think uh, the uh, security function is to be implemented on the uh, data flow layer because it buffers uh, the data and the, uh, the payload, uh, I mean the protocol level payload, uh, protocol data unit. So I think the security or encryption should be um, applied in the data flow layer, not the data path. OK, thanks. Hey, um, I have a question. Yes. If you go back one slide, I think it's one slide. Oops, here uh, we put it back in this mode. Hang on. This slide? It's the slide. Um, yes, this one. So um, if you look at the data flow layer where you got the data flow um, co connecting to another data flow layer, connecting to the end uh, data flow layer, the application layer is expecting something. Uh, typically, they just expect that the uh, packets go from here to here, and then they'll deal with it. If the data flow layer in, uh, introduces some compute, um, what's I mean, if you think of uh, the left as an end user and the right as the cloud, uh, you, know, you know, your your usual um, uh, content network or whatever, um, and in the middle, someone is doing something. Um, What's the end-to-end -end expectation anymore? That you know, the application sends something from from the left, and the right wants to take it and do some compute on it. But in the middle, somebody's already done some other compute on it, and it's not only security, but what is the end-to-end -end correctness of of what is going on? Yeah, good point. Yeah, I think we need to all think about that point in more detail uh, in future. But I think the application layer needs to uh, take care of the service level functionality or service level something. I mean, the um, the usually the um, application specify the service uh, identifier instead of the uh, this kind of the middle boxes or um, the waypoints of the computing computation. So application layer should handle the such kind of the uh, service level uh, integrity or service level um, functionality, I think. But uh, and I think we need to discuss more about that. But then it should be aware of the midpoints and what's going on, or at least that there exist midpoints, because otherwise, you how do you um, guarantee end-to-end -end correctness? Oh, yeah, right. Uh, I think uh, this draft focuses on the data plane function. So I think uh, control plane requires to manage the how to load or where should be uh, the waypoint for this functionality or for this service. So uh, the application layer uh, should uh, control such kind of things. And the data path layer and the data uh, flow layer uh, is used for the data plane uh, protocol, I think. 
in my opinion. Okay. Um, I think it's worth thinking more, but yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe we can take one last fast question and send uh, the rest of the queue to uh, uh, a discussion on, on the on the mailing list. Or actually, I, I see nobody on Slack, but that's okay. I usually say continue discussion on Slack. Uh, so Dirk or Uma? Uh, yeah. Uma. So it's a very quick question. Uh, I think uh, thanks for the good presentation. So I have my co question is. Uh, you uh, pointed the active networks in the beginning of the presentation. Uh, and the first question Dirkal's asked, uh, it's mostly uh, massaging the payload, right? With the data flow layer, with the small program there. So is that the use case you have in mind? Or uh, uh, so are you doing anything uh, which is not to, not to do with the payload, right? But still applying some service, the compute service on the packet here. So uh, actually, I don't have any specific uh, use cases for the application layer, but the, uh, the we want uh, the one of the application uh, is of this um, how can I say uh, of this pro, uh, the draft is that is to is for the data collection. So we collect uh, many data from the sense, uh, sensors from uh, in the IoT. So in such cases, we need to collect the uh, many data, but uh, some of the data should be aggregated to reduce the storage cost. So that is one of the use cases uh, we are thinking about. So in that case, you are not talking about any application payload, right? So you are just collecting and aggregating. The compute function is basically aggregation of the data. Yep. OK, thanks. Uh, OK. Thank Thank you. Uh, so we're it's one thirty six. I know uh, here. I know that it, they were, they're going to cut us after five minutes past. So we still have four presentations. Uh, Dirk uh, Trossen, you're the next one. Do you think you could? Oh, uh, yes. Say Do again. You think you, Dirk. Dirk Trossen, you're the next one, and you have two. I was thinking, could you make them shorter a little bit instead of 20 minutes, making them shorter so that they squeeze in this time? Yeah, I, I will try. I will try. So, <clears throat> yeah, they are so, that, uh, so that at least uh, Ina gets some time and that we get at least five minutes for Philip at the end. Yeah, I will, Thank I will you. do my best. Um, Eve, I don't know, did, are you able to share the slides or did I send them too late? Otherwise, I'll try to share them. Permanently. I think you sent them too late. I don't can have them you, queued up here. Can you give oh, me the... Could... If yes. you give me the queue, I put I enter the screen queue. Yes, we will do that. You are granted. <laughs> okay, thanks. <clears throat> I'll see well because I can do both of them. Uh, from the same share here. So yes, the um, the transfer. I, I hope you can see that. I hope I'm still sharing the right screen. Yes, you yes, are. You are. Good. Good. Um, so I only copied uh, the abstract here, but the important sentence, the very last one. Um, so the various questions that at the moment are being asked about transport protocols in connection with coin. And again, uh, the the last sub sentence is very important to the point I also made before. Um, we outline a number of research challenges and use cases for that uh, in the draft. And for the structure, these are the main updates. So again, this is only an update on an ongoing draft since we're focusing on the updates. Um, discuss later a couple of the updates we made in addressing and flow granularity. We added a new section five on collective communication and multi for multi-party communication and the challenges that transport has in that area. Uh, and we also renamed section eight, which was the previous, uh, obviously a different numbering before, into transport features where we discuss reliability and flow uh, uh, and updated the subsections. So on section three, what we've largely done initially, at least um, given that, that um, I um, uh, kindly invited me to join as a co-author, 
piece to make linkages to other work and that's not meant to be limiting it's limiting at the moment but we're not limiting obviously the draft to that because we invite later to make other links as well so here are specifically uh links to the service routing discussion in the adjacent draft which i will present later separately the app center draft um, we also amended the research questions by various aspects on node selection, constraint-based decision of that selection, and also representing the treatment by coin nodes. Uh, there are several research questions. If you recall the structure of the draft, which always ask a number of research questions in each of these subsections. So we amended these aspects in section three. Uh, on flow granularity, we had a text uh, on the notion of short-term messages versus the long-term uh, uh, resource management between endpoints. So to possibly separate the message and transaction handling from the resource management um, um, aspect for a number of reasons that are discussed in the draft, um, in particular to apply error control on the messages and the congestion control on the endpoint relation itself over a longer period. Um, and, and that has an impact. The reason we've done this, which we discussed in the draft, is it has an impact um, on what could be executed where by coin nodes. That's the reason why we've done that in the draft. This actually is new, mentioned before, and has been done with a linkage again to the App Center draft, which comes um, next. Um, and it talks about possibly ephemeral and short lived multi point communication. Um, that is being done. There, there are, I think, at least two use cases in the App Center draft that talk about this. So multi-point communication that may uh, occur even at the request level only. And that questions the viability of current transport solutions, which we discuss in this new section. And the possibility um, for coin nodes to support aspects that um, you would need to do um, from a transport perspective, for instance, group division into subgroups, is one of the aspects we identify that coin nodes could be helped with. Updates on section eight, again, different numbering before. Um, we renamed the section to transport features. Um, they cover reliability and congestion control uh, subsections. Um, we have several amendments in the in the two subsections of reliability. We mentioned for instance the, the, the possible opportunity to use coin nodes in relation to network coding uh, for reliability. That's one aspect there. Um, we also added, uh, again, a question on the, what's the unit of reliability. So we linked this to the previous discussion in the flow granularity section as to what's the unit of reliability that one should look at. So we try to connect these two texts. Uh, and also added a question on the possible use of multi-source, which was missing before. And how would you handle that with respect to reliability? In flow and congestion control, we added a discussion that we again linked to the back to the um, flow granularity section on separating error and flow control and also the impact of collective communication, in particular when you have uh, potentially forward unicast requests and a, and, and, and a single multicast response. How do you separate or how do you join the flow controls into a potential um, ephemeral uh, uh, a resource management regime that you can use for the multicast response. There are some texts in there as well. Uh, and again, always trying to link this somehow to how coin can help, um, so in particular the in-networking part. So um, I know I keep repeating that, but it's important. What are the future plans? Again, some of this work has happened fairly recent to the ITF, so, so we are intending to update, update this you know, quite quickly. It's a clearer linkage to the various use cases in the revised use case draft. That's again where also, let's say, draft-wise and linkage-wise things become a bit easier because you can just link to a single draft increasingly, hopefully, uh, and also hopefully rely to an emerging taxonomy that we can link to from the transport draft. So there are, there are these kind of things, more sense-making and linkages in a way that we intend to increase. Also the linkage to other coin drafts. We, we did um, uh, extend the references already and they will i mean there's a lot of work and, and non collective communication for instance that has there has been a little bit edited but uh, edit but there can be a lot more edit and we also want to obviously edit uh, at other drafts and um, the relevant work that's being discussed there on competing frameworks programmable forwarding nodes the microservice draft i mentioned already so that we again create the linkages uh, for the overall sense making um as I also mentioned uh, before, um, uh, for the use cases, I think similar applies here for the transport to turn the research questions into something like a requirements language. 
so that we can shape that out and maybe at some point even discuss where to collect all those requirements that's a little bit further down more for the research group overall obviously we would like to have more input and i think yeah that's that's more important and mostly important to get more people involved in the discussion um, and hence the call for more contributors uh, and we also asked the question here, but we, 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 we can skip that given the discussion we had to uh, adopt that as a research draft at, the, at this stage, we want to have more contributors to start with. That was it. And I hope that made it at least I shaved up a few minutes. Thank you so much. Um, and I will cut the uh there's i i don't know if there's i don't think there's anybody in the queue no, no so no. uh so we can move to um the next um the next presentation yes um yeah so uh, can you that. go even faster on this one <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, good. Uh, my, 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 my English language skills. Um, same um, structure here, you can read it later. Um, general structure, we still include the use cases, but they will be moved off. We have a very, very fine, uh, small refinements in there for the update, and they will all be carried over the use case graph. That's an easy one. We do have requirements. Again, um, we leave them here, they derive from the use case, and then we'll see where they make sense in any of the other crafts. Either we carry them over in the use case craft, or if any requirements draft emerges, I think we can take them. They are quite a few, which is good. Um, what we do for now is we will update them in the next revision with a clear linkage to our own section five. But then when the requirements move elsewhere, we have to restore those linkages. So the main focus has actually been on um, number five on the enabling technologies. And um, we added more text in a number of subsections. Um, we added new text in, in section five, in the ones that are uh, shown red, either new text or added text um, there. So on the compute interconnection layer two, we, we there added references to use L2 switching for interconnecting distributed compute resources and linked to efforts that are going on at the moment in 3TPP. Uh, uh, and generally in the area of edge computing in 5G. So there are some references added and some text to discuss those. Um, and, and, um, and also to um, point to the service routing in distributed L2 environments um, as a similar problem to infra data center service scheduling. Um, just even though here you have a distributed layer two environment, so there's some text to that regard. That's a, that's a new text, um, that, that wasn't a previous version. 5.5 um, added text on constraint-based forwarding decisions. So that evolved from the server. Uh, previously, that section was called service pinning, and it was only a, a placeholder. We've now um, uh, extended the draft, uh, sorry, extended the text in an actual text, uh, and it extends the uh, discussion in the subsection before, section 5.4 on service routing by to include constraints into the forwarding decision. Uh, and the constraints between one or more uh, to, to have the forwarding decision between one, one or, uh, or more service instant candidates. Um, there, a point is particularly that load and latency may not be the only constraints. There are a few of them um, discussed. And um, again, the relation to the networking part is in the support of the network in the matching operations. Uh, um, because they may need to be coordinated across several routers to achieve uh, the equivalent to a service scheduling capability that you know from intra data center um, um, scheduling of service requests in a distributed setting. So there's some discussion around there. That's where, again, coin specific comes more in. But also reference to ongoing work, C event Dynecast in the ITF, ICNRG work, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, and that's not, it's only a start of it. There will be more references if possible. As I said, collective communication is new. Um, as a pattern that exhibited in a number of microservice scenarios, as we have in the use cases, um, to go from not just one-to-one, -one, but two multi-point um, use cases. We also observed that the patterns may be short-lived. In one of the use cases, you can see that um, through pulling uh, various frames. And uh, they can be as short-lived as single requests. And, uh, and, and, and so, so here we discussed the spontaneous formation of multi-point relations. And we make references here to ongoing work that could facilitate those, like in the beer working group, there's actually an ongoing draft that addresses that for beer-based uh, uh, solution, forwarding solutions. 
future plans here rather than before move the use cases good link the requirements for now more clearly to section five but then keep in mind to potentially move them elsewhere if there's requirements work emerging in the group we are quite willing to and happy to do that um there are some other bits and pieces missing in section five so section five is the core section for the future plans to elaborate on to make clearer linkages to other crafts to references so there's that goes more into really the overview work and trying to tie in um, what's been done elsewhere. Um, ask the same question here, but that's not that relevant on the RG draft. Good. Uh, I shaved hopefully again something up. But I might, may have lost anybody in the queue though. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and again, uh, we're we're going to send all questions to. Uh, the mailing list as some people uh, need a coffee, a tea, or sleeping. Uh, Inna, you're next. Yep. And uh, yes, you can take maybe six, seven minutes and maybe a little bit less time than you wanted. And uh, Philip will go a little bit over time to allow you to at least have some minutes to talk about Piccolo. Okay. And we'll cut the we'll cut the our presentation at the end. First, at the uh, in the interim meeting, on your presentation. Yeah, yeah I know. Um, okay, I don't know how I can change this. Yes, yeah, so maybe you can share my slides. Sure. Can you un uh, unshare? And then I will. Yes. Okay. Then I will take the screen. Okay. Is that your presentation? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Great. You're very okay. welcome. Okay, yeah, so this is on the updated draft on enhancing security and privacy within network computing. Um, and yeah, next slide. So first, a short recap of the draft. Uh, so the underlying problem we want to tackle here is that of resource constraints and legacy devices, which are increasingly connected to the internet and also in industrial scenarios. And therefore, there are many sensitive processes and sensitive data involved but we often have a lack of security and privacy mechanisms. And here we see the potential of in-network computing to efficiently retrofit adequate solutions to this. Um, and in the first version of a draft, we already proposed several specific use cases. So we can imagine to retrofit basic protection mechanisms in the network, such as encryption, integrity checks, authorization, authentication, but also privacy mechanisms, um, such that networking devices basically act as security gateways and establish secure connections between inherently insecure devices. Um, however, here we have the problem that current networking hardware is missing actual crypto chips. So right at this moment, our possibilities are a bit limited here, um, but we think there is still room for a lot of interesting research. And we also hope that, um, yeah, adequate hardware will be uh, available in the future. Um, yeah, then next, and this is one subject we are already actively working on, is the efficient enforcement of network policies. So here the goal is to provide a very fine granular traffic filtering at line rate. And this is very promising as we see clear performance improvements in comparison to existing solutions with similar filtering capabilities. In a similar sense, we also see the potential to conduct very efficient anomaly detection within the network and exploit this to enable immediate reaction to events, for example, by implementing deadman switches, which are automatically triggered by networking devices after seeing a conspicuous packet. And Last, and this is another ongoing research project of us, we also see a high potential to offer a cost-effective and efficient solution for network monitoring. 
um, for example, by creating comprehensive flow records at networking devices without additional hardware or software. Um, yeah, so that's what was already part of the first draft version. And in the updated draft, we now added another idea, uh, which I want to present a bit more detailed. So next slide, please. Um, yeah, so we call this in-network vulnerability patches. And this works a bit similar to anomaly detection and policy enforcement, but is more specific. And yeah, a common problem of legacy and resource constrained devices is that they are often hard or even impossible to update. And therefore, later emerging vulnerabilities cannot be fixed on the devices themselves. Um, and furthermore, even if updates are possible, uh, these are often just not conducted out of ignorance or laziness. And it's also very time consuming for yeah, hundreds of devices. And here we see again the potential of in network computing uh, to provide an efficient solution. So the idea here is to basically implement a signature based intrusion prevention system on networking devices. Um, meaning that we can define very fine granular traffic patterns of known attacks and then just drop matching traffic. One advantage here is that such in network patches could be easily or even automatically distributed to capable networking devices, for example, in the form of software updates. And thus, this approach offers a high scalability. But the main advantage is that um, the application would be at line rate and this is um, yeah, an important advantage for low latency scenario news um, but of course we need to conduct research to evaluate how much we can actually benefit from this approach in comparison to traditional ips systems um, yeah so that's it for this idea so next slide yeah to wrap this up already this draft is essentially, essentially um, about the research potential we see in in-network computing for improving and retrofitting security and privacy. And we mainly want to raise awareness for what is possible with in-network computing in this field. Um, and as I mentioned before, we are already actively conducting research on some of the presented topics, the first promising results. However, I'm really curious to hear about your opinions on this topic and especially if it's of any interest for this group and what perspectives you see for this draft so that's it um and yeah thank you thank you so much yes i think the topic is of interest it's actually in our charter to look at security i would suggest that uh, you continue discussing this on the list which i think uh it's the right place. And I actually put it on the notes, but thank you very much for highlighting uh, the research projects or the research ideas related to this. Uh, I think every presentation should have this. So thank you very much. So uh, Philip, you, you can take maybe five, six minutes. We're, we're going to be a few minutes overboard, but I think it's fine. Hello, can have I come through or not? You or do I have are. to join the queue? Do I have to join the queue, do I? Yes, no, no, you just you have just... to. Can you share my slides, please? Um, I'm not sure I have your slides. Um... I think I had them, but... Oh, no, actually, I do have them. OK, let me go back, sorry. That's great. Okay, they're coming through, so I'll, I'll start. So um, I'm Philip Early, um, and thank you very much. I'm just going to tell you very briefly about a collaborative project um, called Piccolo that we've just started about in-network compute for 5G services. Um, next slide uh, would be nice. Um, so we've only been going a month. Um, so these are just some first initial ideas about what we're going to do and about the use cases that we're looking at. Um, we've got uh, listed some of the people involved there. Um, so some of them are well known for this group. Um, so I think uh, we're very, you know, I'm very pleased with the with the 
set of partners and the people we've got involved and we've got some nice use cases coming uh, and we're certainly intending to to contribute in coin and we're keen to you know to collaborate through fora such as such as coin um, i think we can go on the next slide thank you uh, so yes, I say it's about in-network compute for 5G services. So we'll slide very quickly to tell you a bit about the in-network compute um, side of it. And since we're short of time, I'll just say talk a little bit about our initial thoughts about the initial directions that we're going to going to take on the project. Um, so we're interested in looking at uh, joint optimization across networking, compute, and storage. So making the assumption that all the um, all the nodes in the network have compute and storage capability in, in addition to networking and how you can jointly optimize across them. So kind of multi-objective optimization, but making sure that's done in a way that's uh, tractable and scalable. Um, we're interested in looking at the distributed computing aspects. So, you know, looking at um, kind of Pi calculus, so how you, uh, distribute functions across in chains and meshes rather than the current um, lambdas uh, lambda way of doing it um, we're interested in looking at uh, resilience and scaling so you know today we the, the approach is to make the infrastructure reliable and add quality of service um, into the infrastructure which is kind of what things like mech do um, so we, we're interested in looking at um, scalability and reliability through instantiating functions and reinstantiating functions rather than making the underlying system highly re re redundant and scalable. So, um, you know, we had a bit of discussion uh, in the chat and the previous one of those previous talks. Um, so, there's, you know, that's about state uh, not being held inside functions beyond their beyond some short life but put into put in storage um, and I think that you know kind of overall our grand vision is that the network in you know in in the you know it's it's the network will provide transparent in network computing in in the similar way to how it provides transparent uh, packet transport today and that being a a fresh um, dimension for permissionless innovation and, and growth. Um, so that's kind of the overall approach that at least we're starting to take now. Um, if we go on the next slide, so I've got, um, we, you know, we've got some uh, use cases services that we're looking at. So at the moment, there's four in particular that um, partners are, are interested in looking at. Um, I've got a slide on coming up on the vision processing and on the automotive side. We've also got partners interested in the smart streetlights um, as a scenario, and we, meaning their uh, BT, who I work for, um, we're interested in in this not only as a, a platform, um, you know, this kind of in-network compute, but also using the, the technology to do um, autonomic and, and scalable network management. Um, but anyway, I've got. So if we go on the next slide, which is about uh, the vision processing use case we're looking at. So we've got um, a UK SME called Sensing Feelings. So they have a product at the moment, which is a uh, camera, uh, which has in the camera or next to the camera chip that does visual processing. Um, so they have uh, they, their customers uh, or what they do is provide to their customers insight into people in real world spaces. So that would be things like in a train station, how do people um, flow around the train station um, or in a shop, where do people spend most time, which department or at a conference, are people uh, interested in what the speaker's saying? Are they excited or are they just doing their email or have they fallen asleep? Um, so, what we're looking at in terms of Piccolo is in, in, in the camera having just a simple uh, image conveyor and doing the visual processing in the operator fog in the edge, uh, that enabling um, them to get into uh, 
you know, kind of long tail, because the, the sensor would be a much cheaper device. Or maybe to, you know, if you've got lots of cameras in the train station, one human trying to look at 100 cameras, instead doing automatic, uh, automated attention focusing, you know, which picture is the most interesting thing happening. Um, so that's, that's a uh, vision processing use case and the first uh, kind of example we're looking at. We go on the next slide. Um, so we've got uh, Bosch in particular, who have uh, interested in the auto in automotive use cases. That's sixty percent of their um, revenue comes from from automotive stuff. Um, so, first use case we're particularly interested in there is infrastructure assisted driving. So this is electronic horizon or kind of seeing around the corners. Um, so at the moment, there's a that the product is is used for um, driver assistance. So this would be things like uh, suggesting you slow down a bit and hit the green lights. Um, and at the moment, the approach is you've got these roadside sensors that send their information to a central cloud, and that then pushes the information to the cars. Um, so the approach we're looking at is to have uh, edge cloud. So the information goes into an edge edge clouds, which would do kind of localized uh, collation analysis and distribution of the information. That would enable, um, you know, kind of things to be done more efficiently and to be done faster. Uh, and therefore, as it's done faster, it could be more suitable for automated driving, uh, you know, and maybe to drive faster even in more dangerous, or the car to be, go faster even in more dangerous conditions such as a fog. Um, so I think given the time, that's that's all I'll say and just say that, um, you know, alert you that we've got this coin related uh, research activity. Uh, and we've got some use cases we think are interesting and some early thoughts on our approaches. And we're highly motivated to, to you know, to contribute uh, here. That's it. That's all that I think, given the time, that'll do. <laughs> yeah, yes, I think we're, we're, we're going to be uh, very interesting to see, uh, I think, the whole group. What do I say? I say we are going. I, I sound so regal suddenly. Maybe it's the British thing. Um, you know, it's a, the, the, the Queen here is very popular. Uh, the um, Not the Queen <laughs> of England, the Queen, uh, the Queen, the show. Actually, the Queen of England is not popular here. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, um, <laughs> yeah, we're 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 oh, back here. Uh, I guess the only people who understand us live in uh, li live in Scotland. Uh, and the uh, but yes, we're going to be very uh, interested in seeing uh, what this comes through. Especially it is research, and a lot of the contributors of this group are contributors to your project. So it's going to be really cool. Uh, we're six minutes over time. So uh, yes, uh, we're going to push our discussion uh, of uh, other work or future work or future collaborations to a February uh, interim that we're going to organize and uh, essentially uh, tell everybody about very soon. Uh, I would encourage people to use the list better. We've had, but I know right now what was happening everywhere. It's so. Uh, so weird nobody has time to do anything frankly um and uh so our schedules are kind of weird uh and um but anyway uh thank you to the top of 88 people who joined at one point uh thank you very much to the other three montrealers who were on the call and who like me uh, have uh, have days to start in six hours and maybe less actually if we consider that we have to wake up around seven uh, for those of you in Europe, have a good day. For those of you in Europe and uh, in Asia, have a good afternoon. And for people in California, well, uh, it's still the uh, it's just still getting feasible, started. I guess <laughs> nearly 11 p.m. Yeah, Thank it's, you it's, all still, it's still for feasible being here. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, there was. And a thank lot you of, to uh, all the presenters. And yes, thank uh, you for all the presenters. The continued discussion. And thank you again for all the people who showed up and. Yes, uh, I'm always amazed how fun these things are. So uh, thank you very much. Good night to everybody. And uh, yeah, it, Bangkok time is interesting. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Be till next time.
Bye, Jeffrey.